People define lost media in any number of ways, but to me, lost media is any piece of inaccessible media, be it a rare book, an unaired TV episode, a lost movie, that has some value in re-experiencing. Maybe it can be enjoyed by a new audience, or maybe it can be used for educational purposes. Sometimes it's just a marvel at the fact that it ever existed like Doonesbury, a musical comedy. The entire Doonesbury gang has moved from Walden to Broadway. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of younger people clicking on this video may have no idea what Doonesbury was or is. It's a soap opera style newspaper comic that has been running in syndication since 1970, originally focusing on the life of Michael Doonesbury, a college student from Tulsa, Oklahoma. With him came a number of bizarre characters, including Dee Dee, the stereotypical jock, his girlfriend Boopsy, Zonker, the stoner, and a, a lot more, all of whom aged in real time. Doonesbury has run for so long that describing the full events of the comic would take hours, but let's go back to 1983. Doonesbury's creator, Gary Trudeau, took a year off from working on the comic in order to produce a new, dynamic version of his creation a Broadway musical. He and composer Elizabeth Suedos collaborated to create Doonesbury, a musical comedy which debuted at the Biltmore Theatre in New York City on November 21st, 1983. The musical's plot revolves around the members of Walden College Commune as they each prepare to graduate and move on with their lives, each unsure of where they'll be taken through adulthood, and then Zonker's Uncle Duke wants to turn the commune into a rehabilitation center as part of a plan to dodge federal drug trafficking charges. Overall, the musical follows the various interpersonal crises between the main characters, while they also try to stop Florida Man from demolishing their house. All the while, the musical's two acts are bookended with skits parodying the Reagan government. It's about as 80s as a story gets. Doonesbury received favorable, but dim reception from critics. New York Times reviewer Frank Rich said it was a pleasant show, the surprise is that it's dull, end quote. Meanwhile, Tom Valio of the Chicago Reader called it pathetically tame and straight-faced. There is no point of view to the show, no commentary, no insight. There are just some very <laughs> conventional songs in a series of subplots that have nothing Thanks to this lukewarm perception, the Doonesbury musical was never performed after its original run, nor released as any sort of film performance. The musical is not completely lost. MCA Records released the soundtrack as sung by the Broadway cast, and a companion script book was also released. And there are a few independent productions based on the original script. But when it comes to the original Trudeau-led stage production, all we have are the snippets of live performances from old commercials and a few stage photos published in the script book. The original version of the Doonesbury musical does hold some rewatch value due to its cast. Some of the original actors are musical legends like Gary Beach or Catherine Burton. But it also features one of the earliest roles of legendary voice actress Lauren Tom. She has a minor role in the musical as Honey Juan, Uncle Duke's henchman and sort of girlfriend. Speaking of Duke, the musical contributed to some minor controversy back in the day, mainly the matter of Uncle Duke being an inflammatory caricature of American journalist Hunter S. Thompson. Uncle Duke is even named after one of Thompson's pseudonyms, Raul Duke, which many may know from his book Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Thompson hated Uncle Duke. Ever since the character's debut in 1977, Thompson saw him as a humiliating doppelganger. I'll tell you why. Thompson would eventually forgive Gary Trudeau, but at the time the musical was released, Thompson felt an immense hatred towards Trudeau. He made frequent threats toward him, such as, and I quote, if I ever catch that little bastard, I'll tear his lungs out. Knowing that Uncle Duke was such a headache for Thompson and his friends makes for a strange experience when listening to songs on the Doonesbury soundtrack about Duke's numerous illegitimate children and his questionable relationship with his sidekick. I know he'd have a plan. First he'd ask for sympathy, then he'd want his way with me. Now why exactly is the musical lost? Well, there's not a lot of current interest in Doonesbury, for obvious reasons. It's a political soap opera that has been running for over 50 years at this time of recording, which isn't to say it doesn't have its audience. But even then, even fewer of those fans may have a desire to see a Broadway musical version of the comic. 
Overall, the Doonesbury musical is just a curio of musical history. And if you want to be generous, it's an early version of a cartoon to live action adaptation. Do I think it'll ever resurface? Well, it's possible. Musicals weren't generally videotaped back in the early 1980s. It only became a more common practice in the 2000s when digital recording technology was more accessible. It wasn't impossible to do stage recordings in 1983, as evidenced by the footage and the advertisements for Doonesbury, but the technology available at the time was cumbersome and required a whole team to monitor and operate the system. Furthermore, it was also extremely expensive. I could see a Broadway production in the early 80s wanting to focus all its resources on the actual live show itself. The only way a live recording of Doonesbury, a musical comedy, may ever surface is if some of the footage shot for the advertisements survives over time, and maybe it's in an archive somewhere, and maybe someone with access to it may think to remaster it. Heck, maybe even someone made a handheld VHS recording back in the day. There's a multitude of ways it could happen, but you never know. 